Okay, hello everybody. So I'm very happy to be at the Panorad League of Dermatologists Bleaching at the EAUB, which is virtual this year. And I can't wait for the next time we actually get to meet each other. But uh, until then, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to present my project uh, on the diagnosis of the 80% of skin conditions. Uh, and this is used as artificial intelligence and machine learning. And the application of the project initially is in sub-Saharan Africa. So I'm going to be dividing. Uh, so actually, if you stop right now and you don't want to uh, listen to the rest of the presentation, you can go on telederm.ai, uh, where we have a very nice logo. But uh, you can also uh, learn about the project, uh, learn about the team members, and uh, also see a podcast on the presentation and uh, uh, get in touch. And from there, we can also uh, continue the discussion. But today, uh, I hope you're willing and have the energy to listen, but I'm going to be dividing that presentation into four parts. So the first part is actually a public health question, is how can we use the African uh, uh, terrain and the World Health Organization solutions to actually uh, make a project which has an impact? Because uh, as you know, we'll, we talk about artificial intelligence and dermatology, but Dermatology and artificial intelligence is mostly a benchmark thing right now. It really fails to imp to get implemented into the real life. And that's why we are integrating these AI techniques into the passion project, where we would like to uh, safeguard and measure how safe these techniques are before we actually implement them in the real world. And the last part is the most important part for me. It's really how we can collaborate and uh, and. I really invite you to contact me if you're interested because uh, we have an interest to build bigger teams in the Middle East as well. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, dermatology in Africa. So like everywhere else, uh, we have uh, skin problems in the pediatric population, which amounts to 90% in, uh, in, in Africa. And there are very few dermatologists, uh, not many in the world, 160,000. But if you go to Tanzania, there's maybe a few dermatologists, like 20 dermatologists for 60 million people. And in Madagascar, it's 13 dermatologists for 26 million people. But uh, luckily, we do have a very uh, nice network coverage. And uh, because of that, uh, I'm wondering if uh, uh, dermatologists who are mostly in uh, urban settings uh, worldwide can actually... Uh, bring their expertise so that even if they do uh, practice uh, their, their art in the, um, in the urban environment, they can actually uh, make a difference as well uh, through the acquisition of knowledge. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to mention that we will study five skin conditions, so atopic dermatitis, impetigo, fungal infections, scabies, and insect bites. And these make up 80% of skin conditions. So uh, this is actually a reference um, to the Neclectic Tropical Disease uh, WHO brochure, uh, where you can actually find this, this figure. And it's uh, originally taken from an article published in JID on the global burden of disease. But then you have the WHO objectives of sustainable development goals, uh, which actually aim to reduce uh, the digital divide inequalities, as I mentioned in general, but uh, also uh, how we can uh, work to ac achieve universal health coverage. And I think this is, means that we should go for low-hanging fruit, where we can actually diagnose uh, very common skin conditions, uh, which are not that many. So uh, we are talking about uh, conditions which carry some uh, morbidity, but it, they are not completely uh, harmless. So uh, if you have a scabies and or impetigo or impetigenized atopic dermatitis or scabies, well, you end up with a, a fatality rate which increases for every single year you do not do a treatment. And this is a slide uh, supplied by the Claire Fuller, who is the president of the International Foundation of Dermatology. Uh, here I forgot to mention, but I think I do want to mention, uh, to catch your attention, that this project is non-for-profit and um, uh, that there's no 
uh, commercial uh, objectives in this presentation or objectives of uh, this project. So uh, how do we collaborate uh, in this artificial intelligence uh, project? So we started with four members. So we have a, the team in Basel and in China who actually works on the research. And then you have the data set collection, which is at the Regional Dermatology Training Center in Tanzania and the University of Antananarivo in Madagascar. So how does supervised machine learning work? Well, this is how we learn in, in, uh, to recognize skin conditions. So basically, we work with labeled data. That means you have a picture, you have a questionnaire, and you have a diagnosis. So um, basically, uh, how do you train an algorithm? So the algorithm is a mathematical operation, a bit like when you teach your children uh, rules of multiplication, like 3 times 4 is 12. And you're going to enter 3 times 4 in the calculator, and you're going to get 12 as well. And in both circumstances, we do not know how these conclusions are reached, but we know that the answers are the correct ones. Uh, so this is how it works. So you need to have a lot of data to uh, tweak an algorithm to learn. And uh, this data can either be uh, images you find on the web, images you already have, images that you create, or otherwise images that you collect. And if, the, if uh, these algorithms are, become effective and that they also are effective in, in the real world, uh, we can obtain a candidate model which will be implemented. Uh, and basically, how do the algorithms uh, uh, learn? So basically, you have an input layer, which is, let's say, the unlabeled, the unlabeled pictures, and you have the output layer, which are the pictures which carry a diagnosis. So basically, you enter in one place and you get the answer in, in, in another place. But in bit, how do you link these two uh, layers? So you... There's all this mystery which happens in the hidden layers where the weights and the research of AI actually uh, creates the model who actually works. And of course, I would like to mention here that it's not because we have a model who works based on the data we have that it continues to predict. So we also need to have um, independent data sets to measure the results. So uh, why do would you learn on Chinese and Caucasian skin uh, to learn on African skin, it seems to be uh, nonsensical. But uh, uh, there is a, a sense, and the, and the sense is data. So as you mentioned, as I mentioned, we need to be able to create data because the problem is we do not have enough data on African skin. And we can find some, some images on the web on African skin, but these are essentially uh, Caucasian and Chinese skin for the dermatology in general. And of course, uh, having said that, we do not we do not have a lot of dermatologists who take pictures on so common skin conditions. So uh, we also use a technique called generative adversarial networks. So the thing is that we have is you, this Chinese skin and this Caucasian skin, and we want to be able to apply the features, for example, Danny Morgan faults for topic dermatitis on the black skin. So uh, this is a this is just a, a schematic image. So you can see uh, the, the uh, on this picture uh, pictures of, of, of different styles on the left of people who actually exist. But now you can see the the miracle of, of, of AI generative adversarial networks because uh, the person on the right actually doesn't exist, but it still carries all the features that we inserted. So uh, basically, uh, we will have real samples and we will have uh, augmented samples based on the images of Caucasian and Chinese skin. We'll mix all these together and then we will have a huge amount of data to actually train the algorithm. So what else do we need? So um, we, we have the data to train the algorithm, but what, 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 what if we not have already experience on the algorithm itself? So the idea is that we are already able to um, recognize skin conditions on uh, Caucasian and uh, Chinese skin, and we want to be able to uh, 
bring that experience to the new algorithm who is going to be learning on African skin. So we'll be doing transfer learning. So basically, uh, in this in this picture, you can actually see that the that network A, for example, is the recognition of Chinese and Caucasian um, skin problems of the Passion Project. And then you will be, before, uh, you will be transferring the, the equation so that it already learns when the data sets on African skin are brought. So you can imagine uh, you'll be able to recognize a truck in traffic and then you want a similar problem where you want to be able to recognize a car in still in on the road even if it's not moving because you know that both have wheels both had headlights and but we are not we are having a similar problem but not necessarily the same problem but in the end what we need is more data so um there are big challenges now because of the epidemic, but uh, the, 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 really the goal of the game is to actually talk with the different teams and uh, encourage them when they can to start getting labeled, structured data uh, by taking good pictures, filling out questionnaires, but also um, using the pictures already in possession. Uh, the, the, the idea is to normalize them so that... Uh, that is still safeguarded, but that we can already do some some work on training the models. And of course, uh, we need uh, a, a dermatologist to find time to label the data. That means to put a diagnosis on the images they collect. But the idea is that it's not always feasible. So we are able, with a lot of pictures, even if they're not labeled, we can do some semi-supervised learning. That means we can actually label pictures called pseudo-labeling and we can then uh, feed uh, labeled and unlabeled pictures, I mean pseudo-labeled pictures, we can feed them to the algorithm so that the learning still takes place. So now I'm just going to talk about uh, how we are going to integrate this artificial intelligence uh, into the passion project. So as I said, most of what is in AI nowadays is benchmarking. It really doesn't really uh, translate into the real world, but uh, we have a we have we are working with a foundation based in Switzerland, who is a member of the United Nations through the ITU and also collaborates with the WHO. And uh, I'm mentioning this because uh, uh, a lot of research uh, to to be uh, to be implementable in positive medicine does require some trials, and uh, this requires funding. So again, we chose the five skin conditions, atopic derm, impetigo, impetigenization as well, tiny skin use and insect bites, because again, these make up 80% of the skin problems. But not only, you also have other skin diseases which could fit into that. But the problem is, how do you find a right a way uh, to manage these conditions? Because you need to be able to offer some advice and also if possible, to have, offer some medication, and if, if these are part of the World Health Organization essential drug list, it's a lot easier. So again, uh, on this slide, you will be able to see that uh, in, in red, we would like to achieve uh, some milestones. That means we need to test the models by dermatologists, by uh, medical officers, and by um, health, other healthcare providers, so that uh, the model actually is safe to implement in the in the clinical daily workflow practice. Okay, so uh, I'm I'm just going to um, say here that I would like to thank uh, teams in Basel and in Changcha and. Uh, in Tanzania, as well as our advisors. So we have uh, Peter Soyer, uh, who is working on the Tedem part. We have Paula Pasquale, who is giving uh, her expertise in, in picture taking. And uh, we also have, uh, uh, I'm not mentioning everyone here, but I'm also apologizing for that, because uh, if you go on the website, you actually get to see uh, everyone who is on board. So it's, again, it's telederm.ai. So uh, now I'm just going to finish with the collaboration. Uh, that's very important because uh, um, 
we need we need to build teams who are willing to collect data in different environments. Uh, we also need to label the data. We need to um, uh, do some research, and uh, we have collaborated with uh, IDA, which is the uh, Digital Health and Artificial Intelligence Research Collaborative, uh, which aims to uh, do research on data and health and uh, uh, dermatology is really innovative because it's uh, computer vision. So everyone has smartphones, and we have uh, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, pioneering which can be done by our specialty. And uh, that being said, uh, uh, the idea collaboration will focus more on the follow up, uh, whereas the passion project itself is on the diagnosis. But the follow up of IDEA will be on the on the five skin conditions. And the future for those who come on board is also uh, different different projects and bigger opportunities for those who want to, to um, participate in the digitalization of our specialty. So again, before I finish, I am going to mention that the data which is uh, collected is stored in the countries where it is collected and that there's no ownership uh, of the data from, from, from anyone else. But the only thing that we share are the solutions. That means um, anyone can work on this on the algorithms that we find. And uh, I'll just mention here again that's a non-for-profit uh, project. So uh, I'm just going to finish here by inviting those who would like to go and visit the website. And this is where our conversation continues. So. Um, here I have finished, so I would like to thank everyone uh, for, for taking the time to listen to this presentation, and I'm also looking forward to uh, talking the talk and walking the talk. Thank you very much.